G'day everybody, Nick Dingle back here with another C-Sharp tutorial. This time around, we're going to be talking about comments and the different types that are available. Specifically, comments are really when you want to put a message in your code or you want to deactivate some lines of code to see how it works without them, or even try and describe what some of your code is trying to perform. So for a quick example, the way I use code comments most commonly is like this. And I do this just to describe what the video is going to be about. So there's a couple of things we're going to talk about. We're going to do comment lines. We're going to do comment blocks. We're going to do comment web reports. And then I'm going to talk to you about the good and bad uses of comments. Okay, just to get some good practice in there. Now, as you can probably guess already, I'm just going to put some more things here. Comments are put in there for our eyes only, okay? For programmers' eyes only. When you hit the start button and Visual Studio compiles your code into an EXE file, these lines of code are actually 100% ignored. In fact, they're stripped out of the source code file before they get turned into the executable file. So you'll never see anything like this inside a final program, okay? If it's been compiled, that is. Now, let's have a quick look at what a comment line looks like. It's pretty simple. It uses a double forward slash like this, and you simply type some words after it. So these two lines change the colors of the text. Simple as that, okay? You can just describe a couple of lines of code, and then you can keep on moving on. The great thing is it sort of breaks up your code a little bit. That little green line makes it look a bit nicer. If it's advanced code, it's really nice to put in a couple of comments just to explain what the hell is going on. The second type, comment blocks, is exactly what you see here. So a comment block must start with a forward slash and an asterisk, and it must finish with an asterisk and a forward slash. And you can actually have as many lines in between those as you like. Like so. All right. And you can then add what's called a multi-line comment, a lot of people call them. Okay. And then you can just, like I did here, Put in lengthy comments to describe things that are going on. Now, the third type of comment, which is something that Microsoft absolutely love, is called a comment web report. So I'm going to do this just before the static void main, or you could do it before the class program. It's up to you. But you do forward slashes, but this time you do three of them. So one, two, three. And you see this XML come up here. Okay. What it's saying is I need to write a summary about void main in here and i'm just going to put this is comment web report looks great okay and then i've got what's called a param which is short for parameter and args and that's this bad boy here and i'll just put i haven't described oh, let's put explained this yet okay now these actually have a specific function whereas the single line comment and the multi line comment or the comment blocks just are there for your eyes. These web reports actually have a little bit of functionality along with them. So, for example, this is set just before main. So, if I come down and I just type in the word main and just stop, you can see this is a comment web report. Looks great. Okay, so you can see it's taken from the summary section of my comment and then put it here in the description of what main is. And if I open up a bracket, I haven't explained this yet for args. Okay, so it's describing what args is. Now, really, I would actually put a proper comment in the future, but that's just showing you how they work. And as I said, these are XML tags. There are other ones available to you. Another one is remarks, okay, which come up in what's, or comes up in what's called code reports. Again, I haven't explained what those are. That might be for a future video, but you can see there are plenty of XML tags to have a go at. Anyway. I'm going to get rid of that because I'm not going to use remarks, but I'll leave the comments. Why not? Okay. Just a quick few things before we finish up. So the goods and the bad uses of comments. Good uses of comments are things like to-dos. So for example, if I haven't decided on the final colors for my program, I might get rid of this comment for a moment. And I'm going to write to-do all in capitals because it is case sensitive. Okay. And then I might say, um, revisit the colors for this uh, console program okay and it's a pretty much a standard around the world these days that you use to do comments to describe things that you haven't quite finished just yet okay now more in visual studio I actually have a feature called a task list and any to do's you have will appear in that so if i go to view and i go down to task list 
you see there's my little to-do down there. And this will appear if you've got multiple source files, they're all going to appear down here unless you change this drop-down box, of course. Now the great thing about these guys is not only can you see it and you can see what you have to do, but you can double click on them and it's like a hyperlink. It takes you straight to that line and lets you continue with your to-dos. A couple of other ones is maybe for example, there's another one that's built in called a hack. Change this code, it's bad. Okay, so a hack might be you put together some code and you're not quite sure if it's good or not. And there you go. The hack comes down there as well. And a final one might be, I might put it a bit higher up here and just put undone, need to insert more content, like so. And that'll appear down there as well. So those are the three types of tags. And you can have as many as you want, really. You can have 50 to-dos if you put it correctly. And so forth. Okay. So those are really good uses of comments, okay? The other uses I've already described to you, these ones up here, are really good for describing whole chunks of code, okay? Especially multi-lines. It's really good to use them to describe really complex uh, functionality of code. Generally use them for a couple of lines at a time, okay? But that's the goods, is using these kind of to-do tags, the undones and the hacks, and then describing the functionality of complex code. The bad usages of comments is commenting. Uh, whoop, forgot that one there. Every line. It looks bad, it gets cluttered, and it's just useless. Okay? Don't bother commenting every single line of code. And on, on this sort of token as well, is describing really obvious functionality of code as well. The following two lines of code change the background color to red and foreground color to blue yeah great what a useless comment that one is okay don't do it it's bad okay i'm going to get rid of it now the other reason you might use comments is let's say for example you think some code is stuffing up your program so you might go oh i think it's a clear comment out that line so that line of code now longer or no longer gets executed the baddest thing you can do is leaving that there in a final program if it breaks your program and you figure out it breaks your program then get rid of it after you figured it out okay or bring it back in don't leave whole chunks of comment oh, sorry whole chunks of comments which used to be code okay get rid of them if you don't want them or bring them back in if you need them okay for example now, the final thing before we leave this video and go on to talking about variables is the idea of commenting whole chunks of code and uncommenting whole chunks of code. If, for example, what if all these lines of code are causing problems and I want to comment them out just to try, um, test it out? You can use this button up here, which is comment out the selected lines. So click on that. All four lines get commented out. I can test my code. Let's say, oh, no, I need those lines of code. You can highlight it again and hit the next button, which is uncomment the selected lines. And they're back in. Now you saw there was some shortcuts on there, Control K, Control C, which might be a little bit weird, but the way that works is you hold the Control button, then I press K, and then I press C on the keyboard. And that's how you perform those double shortcut actions. And then Control K and U for uncomment. And that's pretty much it when it comes to comments, people. So just make sure you pay attention to the good use and the bad use of comments. I'm gonna use them pretty consistently throughout my videos especially when i start introducing the videos like i did with this multi-line but otherwise thanks very much for watching check out the like subscribe and comment section down the bottom i'd love to hear from you but otherwise i'll see you in the next video where we're going to talk about some variables